Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today I want to talk about Medicare changes by quarter and by year. So the thing about Medicare is they will announce changes quarter by quarter of the year, and then they also will do major changes for the next year starting January 1st. A lot of people are aware of those changes annually that they do, but a lot of people are not aware that they release and can change things quarter to quarter. So they can remove or add CPT codes, they will add or change fee schedules for certain things or um, not so much fee schedule for the physician fee schedule, but for the drug schedule, which I did a video on already, so make sure you check that out and they will change definitions of CPT codes. And it's really hard sometimes to keep up. That's why I always suggest signing up for the CMS newsletters and making sure that at least once a quarter you're going on to CMS and you're reading about anything that might have changed. In July of most years, they make a proposal of what the changes are that they want to make for the following calendar year. So like in this July of 2022, there was a proposal of this all this long stuff of what they want to change for 2023 and then they'll be finalizing that here pretty soon since we're in the fourth quarter so that people doctors offices uh, big conglomerates insurance companies whoever is affected by these changes can put whatever policies and workflows into place to accommodate those changes so for example um, I think it was in 2022 or 2021 my years are getting mixed up with me um, but they removed 99201 they no longer keep 99201 a, a very basic new patient level CPT it's no longer available you can't bill for it it's not a covered code and that was initiated at the beginning of a year but the information about it changing came out a few months before so people could make that adjustment and maybe remove it from their fee schedule so they don't use it by accident um, the other one I believe is 81000 some UA code uh, anyway that's what they do they will add and subtract they'll change definitions and then every year they'll release the reimbursement schedule the RVUs and what that's going to be for reimbursement for the Medicare fee schedule so for 2023 uh, I read that they're anticipating it to go down a dollar fifty per unit um, so I think the uh, reimbursement is going to be $1.50 less per unit. So make sure you check that out. Um, they're also doing some stuff with telehealth. So and there's some things that they're working towards to try to help once the PHE ends. They did extend the public health emergency, the PHE, uh, last week. So it's going to go for at least another 90 days. So we'll be taking us into the first of the next year. But who knows, it might end uh, the beginning of next year. And then telehealth services are going to be in a transition period. So make sure you check that out. I will put the link to the proposal from July in the description of the video so you can check that out and you can kind of see what I'm talking about and kind of get caught up because those proposals are going to be finalized pretty soon if they haven't already I haven't quite checked yet um, but at least by I think the beginning of November they have to have those finalized and communicated so that I like I said everyone who's affected can make those policy changes workflows and be aware of it before we enter the following calendar year. CMS uh, also quarterly will release updates, so make sure, again, they're not as big usually or as dramatic of changes as normal uh, for the as compared to the annual ones, but there are still things that you might need to be aware of, especially if you bill a lot of Medicare. So you need to make sure you have somebody in your office dedicated to staying on top of this. You're receiving newsletters in, the, in your emails or you set it on your calendar to remind you to go in and check and research all of 
of that. I know life can get really crazy and you have great intentions. I know I do this where I'm like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And just things keep coming in and I have to prioritize and that keeps getting pushed off. So the emails coming in for the newsletters seem to be a little bit easier because I'll click it from my email and I'll browse it. And if there's something that I know I need to go back because it directly affects me, then I will click on that and make sure that I make a stronger effort to go in and make sure that I understand what's going on. So CMS, not only do they do annual changes, but they also do quarterly changes. And you need to make sure you're staying on top of that if you're billing Medicare. Even if you're not billing Medicare, this is just a little side note I wanna make before I end this video, is a lot of insurances follow Medicare. So even if you're not billing Medicare, participating with Medicare, or see very many Medicare patients, you do need to know that the changes Medicare makes is most likely going to be adopted by commercial payers. And it might not be right away, but eventually they will. So that's why even if you're not billing Medicare or you don't bill a lot of Medicare, I suggest and highly recommend that someone is still staying up to date on all of that because it is established by our government. And like I said, the commercial payers will follow either right away or very soon after it goes into effect with Medicare. So just my little side note, if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave that in the comments. Like I said, I will leave the link for the proposals uh, from July in the link and any other links I think would be beneficial for you. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if today's video was helpful, make sure you smash that thumbs up button to give me some credit there, okay? I appreciate it, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.